Hey guys, welcome to the 81st C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the color struct. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, a color dialog, and an if statement checking to see if the user actually selects a color in the color dialog. So, in the previous tutorial, we looked at the color dialog. And one of the properties that the color dialog has is a color property and the color property returns a color. So we could create a new color here and I'll just call it C and we could set it equal to um, whatever color that the user selects in the color dialog. So now this color C represents whatever color that the user selects in the color dialog. There are many different properties inside of the color struct. The first one that we're going to be looking at is the is named color and the isNamedColor property will return a boolean um, telling you whether or not the color is named or it has a name. So if, it's, if the color is black, then yes, it will, it will be black. But if the color is one like color off of black, then it won't give you black. So now I'm just going to put an if statement here, checking to see if the color is named. And if the color is named, then we're going to have a message box displaying the name of the color. So we're just going to use the name property inside of the color structure to see or to see the name of the color. So now when we debug here, we should get the name of the color that we select in a message box. Since this is black, we should get black. Yep. Since this is olive, we should get olive. Yep. But if we select a custom color, one that won't won't have a name predefined for it, then we shouldn't um, get a name for it. Like, yeah, there's no name for that color. You can also check to see if it's a known color or not. And the difference between if it's a named color or if it's a known color is the known color mainly has um, colors in it that are used for Windows properties, like, for like scroll bars or buttons or things like that. And in order to see the name of a known color, you have to do dot to known color and then convert that into a string to see the name of it as a known color. And you shouldn't be able to see much difference here. But if we select blue, we should get blue, yeah. And if we select a custom color, then we shouldn't see the name of it. Nope, don't see the name of it. In order to see all of the different colors that are known, you can use the known enumeration, or the known color enumeration, to see all the different colors. And yeah, as you can see, there's like ones for the menu bar, one for a menu, and there's other ones in here as well, but there's, yeah, window, window frame, window text, yeah, you see. You don't have to just set a color equal to whatever you select in a color dialog. You can also select it to something, or static um, properties inside of the uh, color struct. For example, you can set it equal to color, and then you can just do color dot, and as you can see, there's a bunch of predefined colors right here. We have maroon, linen, and all of these colors that are predefined are named colors. So if we set it equal to mint cream, then we can just um, just do message box show c dot name, and it showed we should get mint cream in a message box. Yep, mint cream. You can also set it equal to a known color. In order to do that, you're gonna have to use the to known color um, to color dot oh from known color. So you're going to have to do color dot from known color, and then you can just pick a color in the known color enumeration. So if we wanted to set it equal to gradient active caption, we could do that. And then we can just do dot to known color, and then convert it into a string so we can see the name of the known color. And we should get gradient active caption in a message box. Yep. In order to store a color as um, a 32-bit integer, you're going to have to use the property called c.2argb, or whatever you named your color. And the 2argb um, method will basically convert your color into a 32-bit representation of the number, or a 4-byte representation. And A stands for alpha, R stands for red, G stands for green, and B stands for blue. So if you wanted to access those individually, you could do so. You can use the A property, the B property, the G property, 
and the R property, and obviously R and all those, they mean red. And like this means alpha, and this means blue, and this means green. But we're just going to convert it into um, an integer. So we're going to do two ARGB, and then we're going to convert it into a string so that we can see it in our message box. And then we're just going to do message box dot show. And we should see four bytes inside of our message box. Yep, the FF is for the alpha, B9 is for the um, red, the D1 is for the green, and the EA is for the blue. Now, if you wanted to convert an ARGB color into a color, you would use, um, let's create a new color here, we would use the um, from ARGB method inside of the color struct, and it's a static method. So then we could just put, um, let's create a new int here, um, which would be C dot two ARGB. So we'll just put I in here. And then we're just going to set um, our button equal to, or the button's background color equal to um, B. And B should be equal to um, C because basically it's converting um, C into uh, a 32 bit representation of it or an integer representation of it. And then it's converting. Um, that integer into a color. So they should be the same. And we're just going to set this equal to like black or something so we know what black is. We don't necessarily know what that other color is. So now when we click this button, our color or our button's background should turn to black. Yep. So that's pretty much all there is to the color structure. So see you guys.